Hey y'all, what's good, what's poppin'? So for today's video, I just wanted to sit down and talk about some skincare products that I've been using over the past couple months that have really been doing wonders for my skin. These are the products that have really stood out to me winter 2020 slash 2021 and have really made a big impact in how my skin looks and feels. So I just wanted to sit down and share with y'all some of the products that I've been loving, what's been doing my skin justice, and I wanna talk about why I love these products and what they do for my skin. And maybe by watching this video, you might find some products that might be able to do something for you. This isn't necessarily recommendations, I just wanna talk about some products that work personally for me. You know, not everyone has the same skin type, the same skin concerns. My skin type personally is combination oily and my main concerns are acne prevention and fighting hyperpigmentation. So that's mainly what I look for in skincare products. Those are the issues that I'm trying to address, but not necessarily all the products in here are tailored towards that. There are some products that do a variety of things. So I'm just gonna go through everything. I'm gonna tell y'all what skincare products I've been loving and why I love them. So if y'all are interested in that video, be sure to stick around till the end. Before we get into it though, I just wanna say thank you to all my new and returning subscribers out there. Thank you so much for sticking around, continuing to support all my content and helping me to grow my channel. If you are new here and you haven't already, just be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell button as well so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, let's get into it. So I'm gonna go down the list of products and the order that they appear in my skincare routine, just so I have a little bit of a mental organization going down these products so I can keep everything on track. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off talking about cleansers. Now, I think cleansers are honestly one of the most underrated skincare steps. It's probably the one that you think about the least you know you spend a minute maybe a minute and a half cleansing your skin and then you're done until the next time you go to wash your face but it's really important that you cleanse your face thoroughly and remove everything off your face so that the subsequent skincare steps that you apply to your face are able to absorb and penetrate but in the winter especially you want to make sure that you're not using too harsh of a cleanser because the air both outside and inside is already a lot drier so by using a cleanser that's too harsh you actually risk stripping your skin and dehydrating it which leads to a plethora of problems that we don't want so I've used quite a few different cleansers and I found a couple here that do a good job of actually cleansing the skin while also maintaining the moisture. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about those now. So I'm gonna start off with oil cleansers. The first I wanna mention is this Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm. I love this so much as my oil cleansing step. It emulsifies really well and washes away without a residue. It breaks down makeup and waterproof sunscreen really well as well, but it's also gentle at the same time. It's not stripping. The main standout ingredients in this include two types of oat. So we have oat kernel oil in here and colloidal oatmeal. These ingredients help to soothe the skin and help replenish the skin's natural moisture barrier. Oats do have emollient properties, so they're able to draw moisture into the skin. And they also contain fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals that are essential for healthy skin function. This also contains sweet almond oil, which is nourishing to the skin. So all of these things combined together in this cleanser really help to break all the makeup down and the waterproof sunscreen really wash that off. It's really effective at doing that, but it's also moisturizing at the same time. It doesn't leave my skin feeling stripped afterwards. It feels nice and supple and it has a bounce to it. And one thing about this product that I also love that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the performance of the product itself is the fact that this comes in a five fluid ounce container. I find that generally cleansing balms come in containers more like this and I've seen them max out at like three fluid ounces with that. I love that this is priced like a normal cleansing balm would be. I think it's like 10 to $12. I don't remember the exact price, but it's priced like a drugstore cleansing balm usually is, but you get more product than this than you would get in your typical drugstore cleansing balm. So I really love that. I feel like this is a really good value for your money. And then another oil cleanser that I've really been loving is this e.l.f. Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. So this is another oil cleanser that again just emulsifies really well. It washes away with no residue. It's really effective at breaking down the makeup and the waterproof sunscreen. And if I'm being honest, I feel like I like the texture of this a little bit more than I do the Inkyless Oat Cleansing Balm. I feel like it's a little bit smoother and it washes away a little bit quicker than the Oat Cleansing Balm. I don't know what it is, but it just feels a little bit better. So this also has a great ingredient list with a bunch of moisturizing ingredients in here. We've got two types of peptides, three types of ceramides, panthenol, squalane, glycerin, and hyaluronic acid. So a lot of these are humectant ingredients. Again, these are gonna go ahead and draw moisture into the skin, really help to maintain your skin's moisture levels while you're cleansing. And ceramides are also a really important part of the structure of your skin's natural moisture barrier. It really helps to keep that intact and prevents this cleanser from disrupting that while also allowing it to be effective and really break everything down. The only thing I really don't like about this, again, nothing to do with the product itself and the performance of it, but this comes in a two ounce container and this sells for $12, I believe. I feel like this is kind of small for a cleansing balm. I feel like I went through this quicker than I did any cleansing balm I've ever used before. I would rather them just make the size a little bit bigger and maybe just charge a couple extra dollars for it so I really feel like I'm getting my money's worth and I don't feel like I'm having to constantly buy a new one. And then I want to talk about a water-based gel cleanser that I've been loving. So this is what I would use as my second cleansing step. And it's this Naturium Niacinamide Cleansing Jelly 3%. This is another one that's really effective at cleansing the skin but being gentle at the same time. I really like that this has a nice lather to it. You don't necessarily need a cleanser that has a lather to it for it to perform well. It doesn't really need to foam up. That's more of like a texture and a 
a psychological thing for me. I just prefer to have a cleanser that foams up. It just fulfills something in me that makes me feel like I'm getting a proper cleanse. It can be a little hard to find cleansers that effectively lather up without stripping the skin, but this is actually one of them. I really enjoy this. So as the name suggests, one of the standout ingredients in here is niacinamide. Niacinamide's a multifunctional skin ingredient. It can do a lot of things for the skin. It has the ability to minimize pore size, address hyperpigmentation and uneven skin tone. It softens fine lines and wrinkles. It helps diminish dullness. It strengthens the skin's natural moisture barrier and it also helps to repair past damage among other things. Also included in here is glycerin and hyaluronic acid. Again, these are humectant ingredients that help to draw moisture into the skin. They really help to prevent that moisture loss while you're cleansing the skin and really help to maintain that suppleness and that bounce. And I love the versatility of this product as well. You can use it with or without water. It lathers well either way. And it's also so gentle. You have the option to leave it on as a mask for a few minutes to really let the niacinamide soak in so you can get those benefits instead of just washing it off. So I've been reaching for this as my second cleansing step and I've really been loving it and how gentle it is. All right, so now I wanna talk about toners. So the first one I wanna talk about is this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Wild Oat Hydrating Toner. I really love the texture of this toner. It's not watery like a lot of toners on the market. It's not quite as thick as a serum, but it does have some viscosity to it. If you dispense it in your palm, it'll just pull up and collect instead of running off. Standout ingredients in here include colloidal oatmeal and oat extract. Again, so oats are really good for the skin. They're gonna help to soothe and protect. I really like using this when my skin is irritated, especially for instance, after I shave, it really helps to calm down the redness. This contains honey and propolis extract. These ingredients draw moisture into the skin. They have natural antimicrobial properties and they also help to heal the skin. And other good moisturizing ingredients in here include glycerin and squalane. This also has green tea extract to provide antioxidant support. And there's also licorice root extract, which helps to address hyperpigmentation and uneven tone. This is a toner I typically reach for when I get out the shower. I just go ahead and throw some of that on. I just wipe that over my skin to go ahead and start infusing some moisture into the skin and help calm it down. And it's been doing well for my skin. My skin's been a lot less inflamed. And if I'm looking a little red out the shower, immediately after I swipe the toner on, the redness starts to calm down. Another toner that I've really been loving this winter is this Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA plus BHA Pore Tight Toner. I have a love-hate relationship with exfoliating. I love what it can do for my skin, but it can be hard at times to avoid over exfoliating the skin. And I love this product because it's really gentle. It helps me to get that exfoliation fix in without risking over exfoliating. One of the main things I love about this that stood out to me, instead of using just plain water as the main ingredient, they use cactus water. I know the main ingredient in a lot of skincare ingredients is water. It is a universal solvent, so it's a good base to dissolve a bunch of ingredients in, but water in and of itself, besides providing short-term hydration, doesn't really actually do much for the skin. But cactus water is different because it contains electrolytes and amino acids that really help to rejuvenate the skin. And the cactus water also gives this toner a little bit of a viscous texture. When you pour it into your palm, again, it kind of just like pulls up in the middle. It doesn't run off like some of the watery toners that I've used in the past can. This also includes watermelon extract, which has amino acids in it. And then of course the main star ingredients in here are the polyhydroxy acids or the PHAs and the beta hydroxy acids or the BHA. So the polyhydroxy acids are water soluble and they work similarly to alpha hydroxy acids. They work to exfoliate the surface layer of the skin and to help slough off the dead skin cells and to really help speed up that skin renewal cycle. But they have a larger molecule size than alpha hydroxy acids. So they're gonna penetrate more slowly and not quite as deep as alpha hydroxy acid So they don't have that same risk of irritation from over exfoliation. They have a bunch of other great properties They're anti-aging. They fight this process off called glycation Which is essentially where sugar molecules break down elastin and collagen in the skin They're rich in antioxidants and help stimulate epidermal repair and PHAs also have humectant properties So again, they're gonna draw moisture into the skin I find that after using this my skin is really moisturized supple bouncy It's not drying at all and then we've also got beta hydroxy acids in here or BHAs and these are oil soluble exfoliating acids so they're really able to penetrate into the pore and exfoliate within the pore and these help to break up clogs and decongestion so it's going to help to improve the appearance of acne and breakouts and it could also help with decreasing visible pore size. Some other good ingredients in here include glycerin, hyaluronic acid, and licorice root extract. Now I want to talk about serums. One that I've really been loving is this First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Niacinamide Dark Spot Serum. So this contains three different ingredients in here that really help to address hyperpigmentation we've got niacinamide, which is, again is a multifunctional skincare ingredient, which also helps with addressing hyperpigmentation. We've got licorice root extract. Then we've also got this ingredient. Hold on, I have to read it. Don't roast me. Undicillin oil phenylalanine. 
I could not do that. So basically these three ingredients address the different pathways that lead to hyperpigmentation. So they really help with stopping the formation of hyperpigmentation and also helping to fade past hyperpigmentation. And when I used this product, I found that my dark spots faded quicker than with pretty much any product I've ever used before. I like that this has a multifaceted approach at addressing hyperpigmentation. And I feel like that's why this one works so quickly for me personally, because like I said, each of those three ingredients address a different pathway in pigment production that leads to hyperpigmentation. We've got kiwi fruit extract in here which is rich in vitamin C and we've also got green tea extract these are gonna help provide antioxidant support and fight free radical damage and then we've got glycerin and panthenol to help hydrate the skin and we've got allantoin and feverfew to help calm the skin so like I said with this I noticed that my dark spots have faded a lot quicker than with pretty much any product I've used before and it also helps to infuse the skin with a nice lightweight hydration before I go ahead and layer on my moisturizer because it has those nice moisturizing ingredients in there and I also noticed if I have some redness when I apply this that that also calms down significantly as well. Another serum that I've really been loving from the drugstore is this Bliss Glow and Hydrate Niacinamide plus Hyaluronic Acid Day Serum. So again, like the name suggests, this contains niacinamide, which is a multifunctional ingredient. We've also got licorice root extract in here. We've got vitamin E for antioxidant support, glycerin and hyaluronic acid to bring moisture into the skin, and oat kernel oil to help soothe and hydrate the skin. So again, this is pretty similar to the First Aid Beauty Serum. It's not as effective at addressing hyperpigmentation, but you do have that niacinamide and the licorice root extract in here. So you will see a difference in your hyperpigmentation with continued use. And again, it has a set of ingredients that are gonna leave your skin with a nice lightweight hydration after you apply it. And then I also just wanna talk about some moisturizers that have been doing well for my skin. The first one I wanna talk about is this Naturium Plant Ceramide Rich Moisture Cream. So this actually advertises being more for dry skin types. I know I mentioned that I have combination of oily skin, but I actually only use this as a night cream and it's honestly been doing wonders for my skin. And I haven't had any skin issues with this either. This doesn't irritate me or break me out or anything. So there's a complex of ingredients in here that are meant to mimic the skin's natural lipid barrier and to help prevent trans epidermal water loss. So we've got ingredients like glycerin, shea butter, squalane, and hyaluronic acid, and these really help to moisturize the skin. We've also got ceramides, essential fatty acids, and phospholipids, and these are those ingredients that really help to mimic the skin's natural lipid barrier that really help to seal everything in. And then there's also vitamin E in here to help provide some antioxidant support and to fight free radicals. So this moisturizer has a very thick texture, but it soaks in really well. There's no residue left on my skin and it doesn't feel heavy at all and like I said this doesn't cause my skin any issues I haven't noticed any breakouts or any changes in texture even though this does include shea butter which can be somewhat of a problematic ingredient for some people and I've really been loving this at night as my final moisturizer to just help seal everything in and it's really helped at keeping my skin from being dehydrated and chapped because even though I do have combination of oily skin at times my skin can be dehydrated there is a difference between dry and dehydrated skin you can be oily and have dehydrated skin and I have suffered from that this has done a really good job at helping to mitigate that issue and helping to keep my skin nice and soft and supple. Another moisturizer that I've really been loving is the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Triple Lipid Peptide Cream. This is just a sample size, but I featured the full size of this in my skincare 2020 favorites. I just love this so much. It's so moisturizing and it sinks into the skin so well. My skin literally drinks this up. There's a 12% blend of ingredients in here that really help to revitalize and moisturize the skin and also, again, to help mimic the skin's natural lipid barrier. So there's a 3% lipid complex that consists of ceramides and fatty acids. We've got a 3% seaweed hyaluronic blend, which is a humectant that helps to draw moisture into the skin. There's a 3% peptide blend, which helps to improve the skin's barrier function and prevent free radical damage. And there's also a 3% lily root extract, which helps to tighten the skin and prevent water loss. So performance-wise, I do prefer this marginally better than the Naturium Plant Ceramide Cream, but this is expensive. I believe this sells for $50, if not more, at Sephora, whereas the Naturium Plant Ceramide Cream is only $25 at Target or on their website. Would I recommend this over the Naturium moisturizer? If price isn't an issue, absolutely. But honestly, the Naturium Plant Ceramide Cream performs pretty much exactly the same as this at less than half the price. So I don't know if I'm gonna pick up a full size one again, but I do enjoy it though. I do recommend it. Another moisturizer that I've been using is this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. Now this is by no means a new product. People have been talking about this for ages, but this is a new product to me. I've only recently started using it. Now there's a lot of versatility with this product. You can use it as a face cream, a body cream, a hand cream. I only tend to use it on my face on the days where it's really dry and really cold because it is pretty thick. It does take a while to soak into the skin and I don't want to say it feels heavy on my skin but it's not the most lightweight moisturizing feeling so I don't mind it per se. It doesn't break me out. It doesn't irritate my skin but I'm only really reaching for this as a facial moisturizer on the days like I said where it's extra cold and dry and I really need to just help protect my skin from the environment but I really love this as a hand cream. It's really rich and on the hands it soaks in really quickly. It doesn't leave behind a greasy residue. 
This has really helped to keep my hands feeling nice and soft and help prevent them from getting chapped because that is an issue I have had in the past. So some standout ingredients in here include colloidal oatmeal, which again helps to soothe and protect the skin, shea butter, glycerin, squalane, allantoin, green tea leaf extract, licorice root extract, and ceramide MP. So again, like it as a facial moisturizer when I need it, don't mind it, love it as a hand cream, absorbs really quickly on the hands, really moisturizing, doesn't leave a greasy finish. So the last product I wanna mention is this Kinship Oat Ceramide Relief Oil. So this is a relatively new product, I've only been using it for a few weeks. This is also pretty unique to me in that I don't usually use facial oils, so I tend to stray away from facial oils, but the marketing for this really drew me in, and I was reading through the product information and I decided to go ahead and buy it, and I'm really glad that I did because it's really done wonders for my skin. I should also say I don't really use this as a standalone facial oil. Instead, what I like to do is mix a couple drops into my moisturizer to give it a little bit of a boost. And after everything's soaked in, it doesn't leave a greasy appearance or anything. So like the name suggests, one of the main ingredients in here is oat ceramide. So again, oats are really good at helping to calm and soothe the skin. And oat ceramide specifically are really rich in skin identical fatty acids that help to reinforce and repair the skin's natural lipid barrier. We've also got a mix of a bunch of other lightweight oils like moringa seed oil, sea buckthorn oil, avocado oil, and squalane. And these also contain other fatty acids that help to further soothe the skin and help promote proper barrier function. And there's also a vitamin C derivative in here in the form of tetrahexadecyl ascorbate. So this form of vitamin C is unique from most other forms of vitamin C's that I've encountered in that it's oil soluble. Most forms of vitamin C in skincare are water soluble and these limit their effectiveness because being water soluble, they're not able to effectively penetrate the skin's natural lipid barrier. So the fact that the vitamin C in here is oil soluble makes it more compatible with your skin's natural chemistry and really allows it to absorb into the skin and penetrate deeper than a lot of other forms of vitamin C. And in addition, this form of vitamin C is very stable and has a long shelf life compared to a lot of other forms of vitamin C. The vitamin C really just helps with providing antioxidant support, neutralizing free radical damage, helping to address hyperpigmentation, boosting collagen production, a whole bunch of good things. I've noticed since incorporating this into my skincare routine specifically, my skin's a lot more resilient it doesn't get irritated or red as quickly. And again, in conjunction with all of the other products I've been using in my skincare routine, because of the vitamin C in here, this has also really helped with addressing my hyperpigmentation. And I've noticed that that's been fading a lot quicker since incorporating this into my routine as well. So that's it for my winter skincare 2020 slash 2021 favorites. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below what have been your favorite skincare products this winter, what's really done your skin wonders. Let me know if you've tried out any of these products that I mentioned today and what your thoughts are on them or if you're interested in trying any of them. Also, let me know down in the comments if y'all have any ideas for future videos so I can keep those in mind when I'm sitting down and thinking of things to film. Be sure to go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell button as well if you haven't already so you can stay up to date on all my content. And with that being said, I should be back shortly with a new video. Bye.